Hey everyone, and welcome to the Hong Kong Disneyland Hotel. I'm going to be checking out shortly and heading over to Hong Kong itself, but before I do that, I'm going to go downstairs and have a Tai Chi lesson with one of the Disney characters. Okay, I've just come down to the Tai Chi with Mickey, and the fire alarm just got off in the hotel, so I guess I'm going to have to evacuate the building. So that's a bit different. I guess that's got to be an early morning wake-up call for some people. Hopefully the hotel doesn't burn down with all my stuff in the room. Hopefully it's just a test, I'd imagine. I guess I'm going to make my way over to by the sea over there. See people coming down the stairs there. Eh? I think I'll find somewhere in the shade to sit down for a bit, with a nice breeze. I guess Tai Chi, with one of the Disney characters, is now cancelled. At least I didn't decide to have a lie-in this morning, but it would have been a bit inconvenient. The uh, bell stopped ringing, but nobody's going back inside yet, not even the cast members, so I guess just sit here for a bit longer. Been about 20 minutes so far, so not too long. Okay. Yep, definitely looks like the Tai Chi with the Disney character has been cancelled. So I guess I'm just going to head back to the room, pack my bags, and then make my way into Hong Kong itself. Well, I didn't get to do any Tai Chi with the Disney characters this morning, but at least I got to do it yesterday. So I packed my bag, it's time to check out and head over to Hong Kong. So I'm just on my way to reception to check out. After I've done that, I'll get the courtesy shuttle bus to the park. There I'll catch the MTR train all the way into Hong Kong. So it looks like they did the Tai Chi with the Disney character after all. Today was Donald Duck, same as yesterday. I just noticed it just after I checked out, so I wasn't able to do the Tai Chi, but I did get a picture with him, so I guess that counts a little bit. So now I'm just going to catch the resort shuttle from by here, which is just by the reception area over there, and it will take me to the main park where I'm going to get the MTR train all the way into Hong Kong. This is the MTR route that I'm going to be taking. I'm going to start off here in Disneyland Resort, then go to Sunny Bay. From Sunny Bay, I'm going to go to Nam Chong, and then from Nam Chong, I'm going to go to East Simsha Shui. Should take 35 minutes. Now I'm hoping this line isn't to get to the MTR station, because it's right down there, and it's double back on itself and it's going all the way down there. I better go and check this out because that's the MTR station. Ugh, I think I might get a taxi. So I've just talked to a cast member and luckily this line isn't for the MTR, it's for a special show that's happening today. The park's actually closed on Wednesday. In fact, Hong Kong Disneyland is closed on Wednesdays indefinitely at the moment, so I don't know when they're going to pick up and go back to seven days a week. For at least, I don't have to wait in a queue of thousands and thousands of people. I'm going to assume that there must be a special opening of the new Frozen Land, and all these may be magic access pass holders, so they're going to experience Frozen Land before anybody else. Anyway, here I am at the MTR station. <laughs> No queue. 
<laughs> that's cheered me up a bit. So the train in the station, am I going to be able to make it? I made it. I'm on the train. I'm heading into Hong Kong. The MTR train that goes from Disney Resort Station to Sunny Bay is an exclusive one just on the Disney lines. You can see everything's themed. You've got Mickey Mouse windows and you've got statuettes everywhere. There's Jimmy Cricket. There's Minnie Mouse. And you see it's virtually empty at this time of the day because everybody must be going to that special event. Oh. Well, that's it for Hong Kong Disneyland for another, say, six months. Then I'm going to be back again for another two days with my two children, Matthew and Holly. Like we're arriving at Sunny Bay Station. Sunny Bay. So I want to go on platform two to Hong Kong. So that's this way. So my plan for today is to try and explore as much as Hong Kong as I can. I originally wanted an early lunch at a place called Tim Ho Wan, which is the cheapest Michelin star restaurant in the world. It's going to be a bit late now getting there due to all that fire alarm business at the hotel. But first thing I'm going to do, check into my new hotel, which is the Intercontinental Grand Stamford. Then I will go to Tim Ho Wan for a later lunch. After that, I'm going to go on to Hong Kong itself do some exploring. I've got tickets to go on the peak tram right the way to the peak. Keep walking around for a bit, probably go on the mid-level escalators to a couple of temples. And then this evening, I've got some really interested plan. I'm going to Happy Valley Racetrack to watch some horse racing. To be honest, I'm not a fan of horse racing, but I thought I'd do it because I'm here, because how often can you watch the horse races in Hong Kong? So here I am, platform two towards Hong Kong. And I've got to take it for three stops, get up at Nam Chong, and then take that all the way to East Tim Sha Shui, which is where the hotel is. I'm just about to catch the last MTR to East Tim Sha Shui Station. Every MTR stage has got a load of different exits you can leave from, so it's really handy that they have these signs in every station. It tells you which exit you need to take for where you want to go. I want to leave from exit P. Rolex shop over there. Don't think I'll be going in there later. And there's my hotel, the Intercontinental Grand Stanford. And it should have a great view of the harbour. Even though it's only half past 11, I've been so lucky and my room was ready, so they allowed me to check in early. So I'm in my room, it's on the 17th floor. It's got an amazing view, are you ready for this? Just look at that. So that's Hong Kong Harbour, all the way along there. Victoria Harbour, I believe it's called. And the main areas are just over to the right hand side over there. So I'm just on the water's edge. So let's have a little look around the room, shall we? So this is on the 17th floor. Like I said, it's a club room. So I have access to the club lounge. It's a king size bed. I've got a desk area here. They provide a adapter if you need one, if you come from a country other than the three pin plug. Luckily I'm from the UK, so Hong Kong has the same plugs as us. Telephone, bed, clock there. In this unit here, we've got a safe. Here's the mini bar area. 
So we've got a selection of soft drinks and beers and wines and also some liquor over there and some spirits. I'm not sure if they're all included because I'm in a club room, so I better check before I start drinking any of them. Got the wardrobe area here with some robes. Anything here? Imagine some laundry baskets, a couple of pairs of slippers, nothing in there. Some extra bedding if it gets too cold, but I don't think it will because we're in Hong Kong. Then here we've got the bathroom, plenty of towels, nice marble sink, toiletries there, and toilet, and it's even got a sit-down shower. Pretty good. So like I said, this is room 1742 on the 17th floor on the club level. So I think I'm going to enjoy staying here. And at night, that scene in front of me here of Victoria Harbour is going to be absolutely amazing with all the lights on. And it's even a light show at eight o'clock. Yeah, I think I'm going to enjoy this. What I'm going to do now is just have a quick refresh. I'm going to pop to the club lounge and get a free drink because why not? If I'm paying for them, I might as well have them. Then I'm going to go to Tim Ho Wan, like I mentioned, to get myself some lunch. So to go to that place, I'm going to go to the original Tim Ho Wan, the one that actually got its Michelin star in Sham Shi Po. So I've got to get back on the MTR station and head north for a few stops. Tell you what, I'll see you guys in the club lounge in just a minute. That's the view from the club lounge. So I'll do a full tour of the club lounge some other time. Like I said, I've just come for a quick drink before heading into the city. So I'm going to head back to the MTR station, the Sim Sha Shui MTR station, and go north to Prince Edward. That's where the Tim Ho Wan in Sham Shi Po is. Looks like it'd take about 15 minutes maybe, including the walk and the MTR. That's not too bad. I get, so that means I'll be getting lunch about half 12, so I've got a feeling it's going to be packed. I believe you have to take a ticket before you sit, get called to your table. And because I'm just going to be a solo eater, I'll probably be put on a table with other people. Which, not 100% about, but that's the culture here, so you've just got to go with the flow. There's an Ikea in the train station. That's a bit different. Disembarked at Prince Edward Station and now I'm going to exit via, I think it was E, onto Boundary Street. So this area looks a bit more local than it does over by the harbour. See everybody hanging here washing out the windows to dry. Shouldn't take too long in this heat. So you need to select what you want. So I'm going to go for some steamed pork and shrimp dumplings. I'm going to go for a baked bun with barbecue pork. And I'm going to go for one other thing. Rice noodles with shrimps. Shall I get some dessert as well? Going to have, oh, you're going to have a cream soda for a drink. I think I'll go for gluttonous jelly and goji berries. And that's it. That's up for you. So one thing I realise, it's mandatory to order tea, even though I don't drink tea. So I went for the cheapest one at six Hong Kong dollars. And then you use the tea to wash your bowl, spoon and cup. So you've just got to clean your cutlery and your bowls for the tea they provide. So there we go. Okay, so here's the first things that came out, the barbecue pork buns. 
Um, this is the jelly way with Gucci Berry. So let's see what these are like, shall we? They're really soft. Mm. It was filled with really juicy barbecue pork inside. It tastes really good. So the barbecue sauce is like a gravy. I'm not sure how you're meant to eat it with chopsticks or your fingers. Well, I do. I'll break it in half and you guys can see what it's like. But that's what it's like inside. Like I said, it's really flavorful. It tastes really, really nice. So let's attempt the chopstick, shall we? I'm filling up a few more things. They look like they put them out in one go. What's bigger? The table next to me, that side, I just had a continuous stream of fresh food coming from. Hang on, there you go. Really, really good. Recommend these buns to anybody. Oh. Maybe I'm going to get some more stuff now. Thank you. Okay. So let's finish this bun and I'll move on to my rice noodles. So that's the barbecue pork buns done. So this is the rice noodle rolls with shrimp. Looks like they've coated them in soy sauce. So let's try these now. Okay, let's try these rice noodle rolls, shall we? Okay, they're quite glutinous. Maybe I'll... Another bite. Okay. Mm. okay, the shrimp are certainly pretty big in there. But that's like shrimps that go in there. Don't even see that. So they're pretty chunky. So it hasn't got that much flavour, if I'm honest. I prefer the barbecue pork buns. Definitely prefer the barbecue pork buns than these rice noodle rolls. Don't think really good though. If I can break them in two a bit. Okay. I'll rough day hurry up and bring my drink. I'm getting pretty thirsty eating this. After this, I'm still expecting the sumai dumplings and still wait for my drink. So this is the last thing that they're bringing me. It's the sumai dumplings with pork and shrimp. And it looks like they're really hot. I can see the steam coming off them. It's very hot. So they brought my drink down. I've gone for just a cream soda, a sweat cream soda. I decided to go for a cream soda. Because I haven't had a cream soda since I was a kid. You don't really see them very often. What? And I'm fed up with things like Coke, Sprite and Fanta. Well, Prince back made me to be in a kid, that was. Okay, last one. I cut it up so you'll be able to see what it looks like inside. Well, try and cut it up anyway. You see they've got some really big shrimps in there. Okay, last one. So that's the sumai gone. Now all I'm going to do is the gelatinous rice. So this is my dessert, some jelly with goji berries. Okay, it's just like standard jelly. Nothing special with this one, just standard jelly. Can't really taste the fruit that's in there, but the dessert goes it fine. Yeah, and so the roll is the receipt statement yeah, yeah. to the menu. I'm not sure where I pay, but I guess if I stand up and start walking towards the exit, somebody will grab me. So I just finish this jelly, and then that's it. I give you the review for what I leave. And if you're interested in what this cost, it came to a hundred and thirty-two Hong Kong dollars. So I've just finished my lunch at Tim Huan, and here's a little review for you guys. First of all, the barbecue pork buns. They tasted really, really nice. They were really soft and the inside was really moist. The pork was in a really rich gravy barbecue sauce. And I can actually see why they won a Michelin star for those particular buns. Next up was the rice noodle rolls with shrimps. 
If I'm honest, I wasn't very keen on those. The, the shrimp inside were really juicy and plum, but the rice noodle rolls, I don't know, they just tasted really wet. But I suppose they're noodles, so they would do that. But if I was going again, I wouldn't order those. Then I had the uh, sumai dumplings. So they were pork and shrimp. And again, they were really tasty. They were really, really hot. You could tell they've just come out of the steamer. Let's watch that guy there crossing the road. Make sure I don't get run over. So, yes, yeah, so the sumai, they were really tasty, really hot, really juicy. Then for dessert, I had the jelly with goji berries. That, nothing to write home from. It's just a standard jelly with some piece of the fruit in there. If I'm honest, service wasn't that good, but they were really busy, so you can't really expect too much. And they did forget my drink as well, the cream soda, I had to ask for that. And it would have been nice to have that drink at the beginning just to wash down the food. In the end, I had it right at the end. Anyway, I'm gonna head back to the MTR station now, get on the MTR to Central, so that's in Hong Kong itself on Hong Kong Island. And then I'm heading up the peak tram all the way to the top of the peak. And we'll have a great view of the whole of Hong Kong below us. Originally, I wanted to get the Star Ferry across, but because I'm running quite late today because of that fire alarm in the morning at the hotel, I'm just going to take the MTR over to the, the main island of Hong Kong. We're getting the Star Ferry back, so that's not a problem. And I'm here for a load more days. So I've got plenty of time to go on the Star Ferry. It's just going to be a lot more direct if I just get the MTR from here straight to central and if anybody's worried about not being able to use google maps at all while you're in hong kong i've got no issues at all with them it's only once you get into mainland china that google will be blocked so i've been using google maps to get me to tempo one now i'm using it to go back to prince edward station no problems i'm also using a e-sim rather than buying a local sim the e-sim i got was from air Alo, and i've had no issues at all for the last few days with it so it's performing just as i needed to do it's always worked, I've always had a data connection, no problems at all. Anyway, I should be at the station somewhere by here. I think this is where I came out. Okay, I want exit J because I'm going to the peak tram central terminus. I guess I just follow the signs to the peak tram. Here's those iconic skyscrapers that Hong Kong's famous for all around me. So I booked today's tickets for the peak tram from a company called Clue. I've used them for all the attraction tickets for my trip to Hong Kong this time. I found them to be a little bit cheaper than even going directly to the actual places. And the best thing about pre-booking your tickets through Kluke is you get to jump to queue once you get to the big tram. I'm not sure what it's going to be like now, but when I came here before many years ago, there was a huge queue outside, which I had to wait for about 40 or 50 minutes to get on the tram. Hopefully, fingers crossed, this time I've just got to scan my QR code from Kluke and I'll get straight on the first tram. <laughs> this video isn't sponsored by Kluke, by the way but I do have a special promo code which will get you 5% off any tickets purchased on the Kluke website. That's good for hotels, attractions, tours, you name it. All you've got to do is click through the link down below in the description and use my promo code TRAVELSHORTS and I'll get you a 5% discount off your tickets. So because I've got my prepaid Kluke ticket, I can jump all this queue here. Right, a little tip is try and sit on the right hand side as you're going up. That way you'll get a perfect view of Hong Kong Harbour below you. But if there's a few people ahead, they're probably all going to rush to the right hand side. Oh, it's actually not that many people waiting. And right at the front of the line. Oh, then get on and sit right in the front and right on the right hand side. That'd be an amazing view. Last time I came on here, 
don't get to see too much. But if I can go right from the front, I'll have a great view all the way up to the top of the peak. I'll look over to the right-hand side and see the harbour. Okay, I'm not in the front. I let the uh, old people go in front of me, because that's only fair. He can hardly walk. Right, so I'm going to head to the Pink Tower now. I've got tickets to go right to the top in the observation platform. Last flight would be there, right at the top. TripAdvisor's number one activity to do in Hong Kong, Victoria Peak. So when I came here last time, I'm sure this observation tower wasn't here or it used to be a shopping mall. I seem to remember getting some bubble waffles on the bottom floor. So I do remember walking over there to that little pavilion and I remember having my photograph taken in that archway there. And that was the only kind of main place that you could go for an observation area of the Hong Kong Harbour. But things have changed now. It's a lot more tourists it seems. Just sitting in the shade for a bit and the drink. I've done the standard thing of posing for photographs like that, with the whole of the Hong Kong harbour behind me. Fortunately, although the lighting is great for photos, it's directly into your eyes. So I don't know, I'm squinting in a lot of them. Some of them, and my eyes, eyes are even closed. You can probably tell how I'm talking to the camera now. But. I can see why it's so popular. You get amazing views of the whole harbour down below, onto the Kowloon Peninsula, and then onwards over in that direction to mainland China. Anyway, I think I've seen everything I need to see. I'm going to head down, have a look if there's anywhere and get a little snack or a drink, and also walk around outside by here, because if I go in that direction, which is the opposite way to where everybody else is looking, the coastline's just over there and it looks out to sea, so I'm going to have a little look at that now. So there's been a steady procession of people coming up the escalators, walking to the platform by there, posing for about 500 photos a person, and then going straight back down. They're not actually savouring the, the view at all, they're just here to take their photograph and go, because they've got to post it to the gram, obviously. Personally, I just like looking at the view. I've taken some photographs of myself, obviously, but I haven't been at the same spot for about 20 minutes, taking about 500 photos. Because, look at that. Once you've taken your photos, just stand and admire the view. There's also a trail you can take all the way along the side of this hill and around the headland over there. And that gives even a better view, I, I think, from the photographs I've seen of all this because this edge of the hill doesn't actually appear, so it's a lot clearer picture of the skyline. But I'm a bit short for time because I want to do a few things before I head back to the hotel, so I'm not going to do that today. If I've got time later in the trip, I might actually go for that walk around there and just take a look at what the view looks like. It may be I don't need to go for a walk after I leave here. You can see the coastline over this direction where I was talking about. So originally, I was once I left this building, I was going to go around the back of it and over in that direction is a place you can look out to see from there, but it's a better view from up here, apart from the sun directly into our eyes. So if you're ever going to come up here for sunset, that's the direction it goes in. It, I believe it sets just over by there. 
You know the value of these houses here would be millions. It'd be interesting to know just how much they'd cost to buy. I know I'd have to probably win the lottery a number of times before I could afford one. So I'm going to head back down on the peak tram now. I'm going to go back to central and find the mid-level escalators. Once I'm on that, I'm going to keep journeying higher back up these hills again. And I'm going to go to Manmo Temple, which I believe is about halfway up. So I've made it onto the tram. Didn't get the very back or the very front. I'm on the right hand side at least. But I'll still get a great view out of that window. It's like you feel the incline a lot more going back oh, there. When I thought it's really for the gates and shit out of What a ride. So now I've got to find the mid-level escalators. I believe I head back towards Central and make a right. I'm not sure. I've got to use Google Maps to make sure I don't get lost. So Google Maps is sending me a rather derelict way to go. It's quite quiet going in this direction. Going past the Central Government Office's main wing. Lower Albert Road. Okay, so this is what's in front of me. You can see it's not really a touristy area. Looks like, looks like just places to work. But Google Maps says I should be there in about 13 minutes. Okay, I've made it to the mid-level escalators. Apparently, this is the longest covered moving walkway in the world. I think I got that right anyway. So the plan is I'm gonna take this a little bit further up, then I'm gonna get off and go to Manmo Temple. And there's little breaks as well, like this, so if you wanna leave and go to these particular roads by the side of here or here. That's handy, there's even a sign to Manmo Temple that way. So the road I'm on now is called Hollywood Road. It's just off the mid-level escalators and apparently the Manmo Temple is just a few minutes walk in this direction. So I finally arrived at Manmo Temple. Let's go in and take a look, shall we? So that was just a quick visit to Manmo Temple here on Hollywood Road. If you're in the area, I'd highly recommend it. You only need about five or ten minutes to see everything inside. Anyway, the plan now is to catch the MTR back to the hotel, have a really quick shower because it's been pretty warm today, and then head off to Happy Valley Racetrack to see some horses. So I've made it back to Sim Sa Shoi train station. I'm gonna walk to the hotel, be about another 10 minutes, grab a shower, freshen up a bit, get chained, maybe have a free drink in the club <laughs> lounge, and then head to Happy Valley to see the horses. Like I said earlier, I'm not really a big <laughs> horse racing fan, but I'm here, so I might as well go and see it. So I've had a quick shower, I freshened up a bit, now I'm going to head to the club lounge, get myself a free drink, then get a bus or the MTR 
or even a ding ding tram to Happy Valley Racetrack. Well, that wasn't bad, was it? Glass of champagne, some dim sum, some teriyaki chicken skewers, and some little fish fingers. You can do that every night. There's also quite a wide selection of cheeses, salads, fruit as well. I didn't want to film in there too much because it's a bit weird when you're in like a club lounge and there I am filming and taking photos of my food. I can only really stay in there for about 10 minutes because I've got to catch a bus which is departing in 15 minutes from a bus terminal and that should be a direct route all the way to Happy Valley Race Course so I don't have to do many changes. Otherwise, I'll have to do a, a, tr a couple of trams or a couple of MPRs to get there. This is direct, but it looks like it only goes about every hour. So I wanted to make it, and I'm hopefully going to enjoy these horse races. God, she's looking both ways. It looks like there's a bus interchange over here. It might be a big one by the look of it, and I've got to get bus 117 towards Happy Valley. It's going to depart at 1842. So it's 1834. Bus departs in eight minutes. Oh, so I think this is the cross harbour bus terminal in front of me here. Hopefully it is anyway. So I've got to find bus 117. I've gone the wrong way. And I've got three minutes to get there. Made it with a minute to spare. Anyway, I think I'm in the right spot. One lot seven on that sign there, which should be here now, but there is a lot of traffic, so maybe. So I guess I'll just wait here till it comes. I've run that last bit and it's a bit warm to be running at the moment, but I wanted to make sure I caught it. Otherwise, I began there pretty late. I think the horse racing actually starts around seven o'clock. It's now 6.44, so the bus is two minutes. Yeah. And that's, of course, if the uh, Google Maps bus schedule is correct. Maybe it might not be. Hold on, I'm going to check that timetable underneath the uh, bus bar. Oh, that's okay. It's every 22 minutes. So even if it, I have missed it, it'd be all right. I'm beginning to think the bus might have been a couple of minutes early because it's been five minutes after the schedule and it's still not here yet. So, but like it said, it comes every 22 minutes or so, so I won't be waiting long anyway. I'm thinking it is probably delayed, because on the MTR app, it's saying an estimated time of arrival is currently not available. So, it is 7 o'clock exactly, so this is I, but the earlier one that's running late, or the later one that's running a bit early. We've been stuck in traffic for about 10 minutes and hardly moved. Still hasn't made it to the first stop yet. I think the screen ahead of me that's got all the stops on, which is really useful. So the next stop is Cannon Street, followed by Leafield Plaza and Sports Row. In hindsight, I think it would have been better get the MTR, even though on Google it said it was going to be longer and with a couple of changes. But I would have been there by now, I'd imagine. Not a big deal anyway. I'm only want to see a couple of horse races. I want to go there more for the atmosphere than anything else. It's 7.40. It's a bit later than planned, but I've finally arrived at Happy Valley. I think I need to cross a few roads. And I need to then find the members entrance because I'm going to pay an upgrade to be a member for the day. And that gives me special access to certain areas within the racetrack. So this is the, yes, look, there's the public entrance here. Like I said, I'm going to pay, I think it's a hundred Hong Kong dollars, so 10 quid, 10 pounds to get a temporary members pass to go to certain areas. So I can go to the winner's enclosure and a few of the bars inside. So this is what you get. It's actually called a tourist badge, not a temporary member's badge. So I'm number 16. I'm going to go for a walk around, have a tour around everywhere. And then let's see what's here, shall we? So I've arrived. This is the Happy Valley racetrack. So all the stand is on one side. 
going all the way along here. And the racetrack goes all the way along there, around, behind there, all the way back around, and over here. And I think this here in front of me is the winner's circle. So when they win, they do a little parade in here. So I think this is the regular admission area. So I can go in there with my path, but at least I can still come back in afterwards. Sounds like they're about to start racing. So let's go by the track and take a look at these horses, shall we? So this area here is called the members enclosure. And because I've got this pass, I'm able to come in here. So we've got a great view of the track here. There's not many people here at all. What I'm going to do, I think I'm going to watch a race or two from down here. Then I'm going to go up into the stands and have a view from up there. Should I pretend and know what I'm looking for? I'm going to pick number four for this race. He looks a bit feisty, I think. Ready to go. So it looks like they parade all the horses before the race begins. So I think the first race is about to begin. Bell's just gone off and they fenced off this area by here. So I'm going to assume this is where the horse has gone to the track. Oh, there's all the jockeys over there. So all the horses are now on the track and they've just gone for a little run, probably to warm up. Some went in that direction and some went down that direction. So let's see how it goes, shall we? Oh, there we go. Like some are racing around already. So if you look on the screen. So as well as the area I'm in, there's about 10 or even 15 private bars and restaurants all the way along there. Each one have got separate admission and they vary in price from 100 Hong Kong dollars. So that's 10 pounds for the cheaper ones like Adrenaline and some others are really expensive, but they also include unlimited food and alcohol. I decided not to do any of that because that, when I finish here, I'm probably going to get something to eat anyway, and it would be a bit cheaper than one of these places. I basically just paid for the tourist pass just so I can go to the members enclosure here and just have a bit more of a private section by here so there's not thousands of people crushing up to you during the race. And I think it's a pretty good view, to be honest, from here. After a couple of races, like I said, I'm going to try and go over here somewhere, maybe go into the grandstand up there and see if my member's badge does allow me to get into anywhere over here. I believe there's a beer garden down there that serves beer, obviously, and also hot dogs. There's plenty of places to put bets on, but I don't think I'm going to be doing that. And I believe there's even a McDonald's at some somewhere along here. Somewhere. It looks like the start is the opposite side, so we can't see the start from here. Well, we just watch it on the monitors. Oh, they've started. So I guess the majority of the race, you're just going to watch on the screen until they make it round to this. Oh, so I chose number four, and he's currently second. <laughs> So I'll be honest, I haven't got a clue who won that. I can't make head nor tail of the sign. So I guess these are the winners. So he must have won number two. Oh well, don't think my number four came anywhere. So I just asked the lady at work here where I can actually go with my tourist badge because I'm a bit unsure. I was hoping to go up all these areas up here, but apparently it just includes this trackside area here with priority viewing of the members enclosure behind me, the members betting area and the members paper. Hold on, I just wrote this down because I forgot where it goes. The paper badge betting hall. I'm not sure where that is. So for 130 Hong Kong dollars, you don't really get that much extra. Whereas it's only $10, I think, off, is it $10 or $30 to actually get in through the main turnstiles. And I've actually just heard somebody mentioning as well, currently until the end of December this year, it's actually free of charge for the public to enter. 
So I guess if you're going to come here, make up your own mind if you're going to take the tourist badge. To be honest, it's not that expensive and it does give you this area pretty much to yourself. Whereas if we're going to be over there in the public area, it's going to be swamped with people and they're probably going to be crushing you up against the uh, fence here. So I don't mind paying a bit of extra to get a bit more room and a bit more pri privacy and not be in public talking to you because I always feel self-conscious when I'm vlogging, if I'm honest. So like I said, I'm going to wait for one more race. After that's done, I'm going to try and take a walk around, probably get myself a drink, or even a hot dog maybe, and see if I can just go into the lower levels of the stands here. Because I think that's public access there. It's just anything higher you can't actually do. Oh, let's move that camera a bit around. So anything higher, I'm not able to go up there, which is a shame because Imagine the view from that one over there. I believe that's called something end, track end, maybe that restaurant and bar over there. But imagine the view you've got all the way straight down this section of the track. Anyway, it's quite an impressive race course. Like I mentioned before, I don't really go horse racing. It doesn't appeal to me. But I decided to do this while I was here and you'd be surprised of the reason. As you probably guess, if you watch most of the videos on this channel, I love to travel. I've got a huge passion for traveling. And when I was younger, I used to love watching Michael Palin on his Around the World in 80 Days show. And when he came to Hong Kong, he actually came to Happy Valley Racecourse. And even back then, I thought this uh, track, and especially the stand, was really impressive. Just the fact that it's only on one side, and then you've got the track all the way going around everywhere else in the middle of a huge city you can see all the skyscrapers over there so just in the middle of a metropolis you've just got this green racetrack plonked in the middle of it so even back then when michael palin was in hong kong i thought yeah one day i'm gonna go there and today's that day and i made sure it was a priority when i came on this trip because normally i travel with my two children matthew and holly but the racetrack is very strict and there's no admittance to anybody under the age of 18. So when we come back to Hong Kong early next year, I won't be coming here because Matthew and Holly will be with me. So I was making sure that I came this time because I won't be able to do this for a number of years, even if I do keep coming back to Hong Kong in the next few years. Oh, looks like the next race is about to start. Let's start to bring out the horses again. They've moved the start line for this race to put it on this section. I wonder why they do that. Unless they have to move it every time just because the ground gets damaged. I don't know. There they go. So I don't know who won that one either, but I know it's not my number four. So <laughs> that's two out of two I've lost. So there's the press going into the winner's enclosure. Okay, I think I'm going to go for a little bit of a walk around now into the public areas just to see exactly what's here. So I don't know where I'm going now. I think I'm going the wrong way and I shouldn't be here because I've just been following some jockeys. Um, this looks like the stable area over here. Well, I can, that way. Um, yeah, like I thought, I shouldn't be there. <laughs> I just spoke to the nice security lady and she told me to come back the way I, I just came. So I'm heading back to where I was. And I think I'll go in the public area as well now just to take a look around. So you can see straight away just how much busier it is here. Wow, there's a lot of people here. Okay, let's see what food and drinks they've got, shall we? So there's a much more party atmosphere over on this side. <laughs> so 
that's the area where you can play bets by the look of it. And it's a McDonald's if you want to have a burger. Shall I download the betting app, actually? I must be set for the UK on the App Store because I'm not able to download the app on my phone. Let's get ready for the next race, shall we? I want to stay amongst all the public areas for this next race, just to feel the atmosphere of everybody cheering, rather than where I am, which is a bit quiet, but I like it quiet, if I'm honest, but it'll be good to experience one race in this section here. I've come up in the stands for this race to see what the view's like from up here. I'll be honest, I think it's better view from up here. You get to see the horses go a lot further along the track in that direction and in that direction as well. And you get to sit down, which is always a bonus. Here he is doing a lap of honour. So I'm going to take a look in one of the betting halls just to see where it's like. I'm not going to place a bet, but I just want to have a look around. So don't take my word for it. It looks like you fill in what you want on those cards. You might be able to put them in here and you can place your bet automatically without going to see the desk. Oh, that's actually food over there. Let's see what the food is. So you've got more automated machines there and that's obviously where you place the bets with a person over there. And that was a quick tour of where you place your bets. I think I'm going to stay for one more race and then I'm going to head off back to the hotel. And I think I'll watch this one from trackside again. So this is going to be race nine of the evening. In total, there's 12 races tonight, but it's starting to get a bit late. It's currently 25 to 11, and I need to go back to the hotel. So this is going to be my last race. I'm back on the racetrack area. When I leave, I'm not going to get the bus again, even though it should be a clear road this time. I'm going to take the tram, also known as the Ding Ding. I believe there's a station just out of the main exit over there. And by leaving early as well, I'm gonna miss all this crowd trying to get on the same trams. So I think for my final race, I'm gonna go for number 11. That horse that came out looked a bit feisty and he looked like he was ready to race. So another one I didn't win. <laughs> Zero for the whole night.
maybe I got it wrong. Maybe there isn't 12 races. It looks like there's just 10 because all the food stands are now packing up and everybody's leaving, which means they're all going to be fighting for the trams. Oh no, I've timed that really wrong. Anyway, I'm going to head out anyway and just wait for the trams. But yeah, everyone is now going in this direction. Even the band's dismantling the stage. So I guess I'm going to follow all this crowd and that's the way. Oh, look at all the trams are out there now. A whole load of trams. There we go. I'm going to go straight on this one here. Well, that was better timing than I thought. I'm right at the very front of the tram. And the window's open, so there's going to be a nice breeze. Ah. I didn't expect to get on this tram that quick. So I think that was a really good night at Happy Valley. Like I said before, I'm really not into horse racing at all, but I think it's more than just a horse racing track. It's a bit like a club atmosphere, to be honest. Lots of people a lot younger than me there, dancing, drinking, and basically just having fun. So if you do, if you are in Hong Kong on a Wednesday and you fancy a night out, don't go to the clubs, come to Happy Valley Racecourse. So I'm going to be on this tram now all the way to Central. And then when I get off at Central, I'm finally going to take the Saar Ferry. Okay, I made a bit of a mistake on that tram. It was going in the wrong direction. I should have paid more attention when I jumped on it as soon as I saw it. Luckily, I was just looking at Google Maps and I could see where I was going the opposite way. So, came from Happy Valley and then it turned right to go to Causeway Bay. Unfortunately, I wanted to turn left to go towards Central. Anyway, I just got off. I've crossed the tram tracks. This one here should be going in the direction I want it to go in. Okay, here it comes. Hopefully it's going in the right direction. Okay, so it's going to Happy Valley. I don't want to go to Happy Valley. I want to go to Central. Okay, this one said it's going to Witty Street Depot. I haven't got a clue where that is, so I'm going to have a look at my phone and see if it's going in the right direction. I've checked the map and we're going in the right direction. Although we're turning left. Uh oh so it looks like the witty street depot is past central so that's good because as long as i'm heading towards central that's all i want because i'm gonna once i get to central i'm going to the star ferry pier and then cross the harbor to thim sha shui so we are here the tram is totally gonna go along that route there all the way along so there's we with street depot there and i want to get off around this area so as long as we're following that thing as you can see it's quite bumpy on this tram as long as we're going to follow that route we'll be fine Okay, I got off the tram at Pedder Street. That's the closest station to the Star Ferry Terminal. But before I go back, because I haven't really eaten anything this afternoon properly, other than just those three bits of food in the club lounge, I'm going to grab something quick to eat. I'm not going to have anything big or even hot. I'm going to go to a place called Don Don Donkey, which sells, well, sells everything. So if you're not sure what Don Don Donkey is, uh, you might be familiar with Don Quixote in Japan. It's basically a department store that sells anything really. There's one just in front of me here. I'm going to have a quick explore. I do plan on coming back to Don Don Donkey later in the trip as well. To have a good look around, but I'm just going in there now to buy some snacks to take back to the hotel room. I'm not sure where to start, but I don't want to be here too long. So let's go downstairs first. 
have a look where they keep the food. Uh, get some drinks as well, actually. Grape jelly. I think I get some of that actually. I do fancy something sweet. Okay. Apple juice it is. single slices, uh, 29, double with 57. Right, how greedy am I gonna be? It won't be enough. Right, I think I'm pretty hungry. I'm gonna get some cake and I'm gonna be greedy and get the double one. I'm going to go with a seaweed and salt potato chip. And I think that's going to be it. Just a small little haul. Just to tide me over for the evening. Well, that was more expensive than I thought it was going to be. That came to 172 Hong Kong dollars, which is about 18 pounds for a packet of crisps, an apple juice, a, <laughs> a jelly, a Fanta, and two slices of the chocolate cake. Oh well, it's a good snack to have in the room as soon as I get back there. So anyway, I'm going to head towards the Star Ferry Pier now and get the Star Ferry across the water to Sim Sha Shui and then walk back to the hotel. It's currently 10 past midnight. <laughs> God. And I'm up early again tomorrow to go to Ocean Park. Right, you're not going to believe this. I went to the Star Ferry, but the last Star Ferry had departed at 11.30 and that was the final ferry for the night. So, I've rushed to Central Station and I'm on one of the last MPRs of the evening. It's currently 25 to 1 in the morning and the last one goes at 5 to 1. So another 20 minutes. <laughs> I don't know how I'll be getting home. Tomorrow... I'm going to go on the Star Ferry. <laughs> That's about the third time today I've tried to go on the Star Ferry, but because of time or anything else, I haven't been able to do it. So I'm on the MTR. I'm going from Central Station, just a few stops, and then I'll be in Sim Sha Shui. Walk to the, walk to the hotel. I think I'll have another shower because I'm pretty warm after that night out in Happy Valley. Then I'm going to get to bed. At least the MTRs are running. I can't believe I made two transportation mistakes in a row. First, I got on the wrong tram from Happy Valley, and then I didn't realise that the last Star Ferry stopped at half eleven. If I do that, I probably would have not bothered going to Don Quixote and rushed over there straight away, and I would have just made it. Oh well, you live and you learn. Tell you what, I'm pretty tired now. Another thing I wanted to do this evening was walk by the harbour as well, but... At least I can see her out my hotel window. Tomorrow I will be going on the Star Ferry and walking in the harbour and seeing the light show at the harbour at 8 o'clock. So my main plan for tomorrow is I'm going to go to Ocean Park. If you're not familiar with Ocean Park, it's a theme park on the other side of the island. It originally started as an aquarium and then they added thrill rides as they went along and it's a huge footprint. In fact, to get from one side of the to the other, I've got to take a cable car or a train that goes through the mountain. So I've never been there before. I don't know too much about it. I've done some basic research online. So I know what rides are there and roughly how to get my way around. And to help me save time, I pre-booked some fast passes as well so I can jump the queue on a number of the rides there. Oh well, what time is it now? quarter to one in the morning 
I'm going to be having breakfast probably around 8, 8.30 to leave the hotel about 9 o'clock tomorrow. So I'm basically the only person in the train station at the moment, or the MTR station I should say. And I'm going to be exiting by exit P2, which I think is right in front of me. Maybe. Over there? Yeah, this is the one. And at least the escalator's working, so I don't have to walk up the steps. From here, it's only another, what, five or six minute walk to the hotel. Ah. Oh. My midnight feast for today is going to be some crisps, some jelly, and some chocolate cake. All washed down with some Fanta and apple juice. Mmm, yum. I know this isn't the best of place to do my video outro, but where else am I going to go? I was planning on doing it on either the Star Ferry or in the harbour area with the Hong Kong skyline behind me. But this is what we've got. The walk back to the hotel. No. <laughs> That was the end of my fourth day here in Hong Kong. And can you believe I'm halfway through the trip already? It's gone so, so quick. But my feet are absolutely killing. The amount of walking I've done these last four days, it's been over 25,000 steps per day. <laughs> it's beginning to suffer. That's why I'm starting to walk. A bit funny, if I'm honest. If you made it to the end of this video, thank you so much for watching. It's really appreciated. If you're new here, my name's Mark and I make travel and theme park videos from around the world. And if you've enjoyed this video, please think about liking, subscribing and hitting that notification bell button. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Bye. Okay, just one more thing before I end today's episode. Just look at that view out of my hotel window. That harbour view of Hong Kong is absolutely amazing. Anyway, good night and I'll see you in the next episode. Next time on Travel Shorts Hong Kong.